Hi, we're going to go ahead and look at J1 solve systems of linear inequalities. And the notation that we're looking at is going to be greater than or less than. So this has a graphical interpretation. First thing you need to know is that the line is dotted or dashed. And we also need to know that this is considered, whenever we have an inequality with these two symbols, we know that they're open sets and we use an open dot um, at a certain point at a given point. So when you are um, graphing, let's say we have y is greater than four. When we use the x and y plane to represent this, we need to know that we're talking about all numbers greater than four. So if I had a number line, we're gonna use a y axis as our number line. And the scale that we're gonna use is gonna be two, so this is two, four, six, and eight. And this is negative two, negative four, negative six, negative eight. What you need to know is that where it's greater than, you're saying that these numbers on the number line, that y equals six, y equals four, y equals two, y equals negative two, y equals negative six, y equals negative, I'm sorry, negative four, negative six, and then y equals negative eight. So I want to go ahead and make my line. Let me grab a marker. We know that we are going to have a horizontal line or a dashed line at y equals four. This is an open set. Now, what we do with this graph is we are going to shade. This is what we're doing in the IXL. So because all the numbers above four are greater than four, it doesn't matter if it's an integer, a decimal, rational number, as long as it's above four or greater than four, we're going to shade above. So let's suppose we have an X value. So X is less than one. We're gonna look at the X and Y plane again. And we're gonna talk about a number line. So X is less than one. We're talking about numbers to the left of zero. So as I'm labeling this, I'm gonna go with consecutive numbers. So let's just say one, two, three. But if I go back, I have zero negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. And X is a vertical line at this point. So I'm saying that X equals negative four. X equals negative three, X equals negative two, X equals negative one, X equals zero. X equals one, X equals two, X equals three. I think you get the idea. So let's read the equation again. I have X is less than one. So I'm gonna find the vertical line of one where X equals one. I know it's dashed. I put my arrows and I'm going to shade to the left because if I look to the left, all my numbers are less than one. So I'm gonna shade to the left. I want to go over how you're going to read these one more time. So in this case, you're going to say that y is greater than four. And then this one, you're going to say that x is less than one. Okay, so for this one, we want you to graph the solution y1 is greater than 2x minus 5. This is an mx plus or minus b. And the y2 is greater than negative 5. So graph the solution. This is going to be the overlap. So it's going to be where the two um, shadings blend together. So for y1, I know my slope is equal to rise over a run. And let's use a highlighter. So my slope is m, which is the same thing as 2. So I made that a two over one. And then I have my y-intercept. My y-intercept is going to be a zero comma b. And so with that in mind, 
my b is going to be negative 5. Okay, so b is negative 5, so 0 comma negative 5. That's my first point. And then I go up 2 and over 1. My second point is going to be 1, negative 3. And because y1 is greater than, I'm going to shade to the left. I'm going to shade to the left. That was pretty simple. And then y2 is equal to, or y2 is greater than negative five. So I look for negative five, and I know that that is going to be a horizontal line. So it's also dashed, right? So everything that's greater is, is not below, it falls above. Because as I, as I move up on the line, the numbers increase. So let's go ahead and shade that. And then again, the overlap of the colors is gonna be your solution. Because it's like it's bounded. It's gonna be like your solution is bounded by these two equations. So again, the overlap right in here, all of this is your solution. So all this right in here, the bounded area is the solution. Okay, so we have more notation. You have greater than or equal to. So this says greater than or equal to. And then you have less than or equal to. And this is the inequality. These inequalities are called closed sets. So we call these closed sets. Then, when we talk about graphing, our line is going to be a solid line. So we have solid lines when we're graphing, right? And then at a given point, we're gonna use a dot that's filled in, right? So I'm gonna fill in this dot. So what I mean by filling in the dot means that this is going to be closed and we call this solid. Okay, now we're going to talk about graphing the solution. So we're looking at y1 and y2. y1 is less than or equal to negative 3x plus 1. So for y1, I want to know my slope and my y-intercept. Um, I like to start with the y-intercept. So this is mx plus or minus b. So I know that my slope is gonna be one equals b. So b equals one, so it's gonna zero comma b. So zero comma one, so right there. And then I know my slope is rise over run. And that's negative three over one. Because remember every whole number has a one underneath it. So that's gonna help me get my next point. I need to extend my graph a little bit. So I go up three and then to the left one because it's a negative slope. One, so I start with the y-intercept, I go up three units and then over one unit. So my point here is gonna be negative one comma four. I connect my dots. This is gonna be a solid line because this is a closed, we consider this a closed set of inequalities. And then when I shade, it says it's less than, 
So think about it. Everything going, if I had to like adjust this, this would be above and this would be below. So everything to the left is going to be shaded. So remember, it's the overlap that is the solution. Let's make that a little bit darker than the last graph. But we can keep on shading to the left. And then y2 is less than zero. So let's look at y2. So when we look at y2, here's what happens. y2, so we think about the slope. So this is m is no slope. And then you're saying your y-intercept, move that down so you can see it. The y-intercept is gonna be equal to, this is just b. So b equals zero, so then I get zero comma b. So then my y-intercept is zero comma zero. So then I start right here my slope is just a flat line. Okay, so let's graph this on the, another color. So where y is less than or equal to zero, this is actually just a solid line right in here. Okay, and then when I shade, everything that's less than zero is below use a color we can see. So I'm going to shade below. And remember that this overlap, this bounded area, is going to be the solution. So this bounded area is the solution. Ready? So right in there. So it's bounded by y is less than or equal to zero, which is down, and then it's bounded by y is less than negative three x plus one. Okay. And that was, again, the instructions were to graph the solution.